Rogers with Livingston and Ted Jellard too. And our host, Fitz and Lando, and he brings it to you. <laughs> creature features and all creatures. Weird. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The dashing chap to this side is my cellar steward, Mr. Livingston, and this zesty and zingy zookeeper, caressing a miniature zombie, would be my charmingly delightful housemate, Tangela. Have we an incredibly fiendish program in store for you tonight? We'll first be watching 1959's Teenage Zombies. I've never seen this one before. We've never shown it on this program ever. And there's a slight chance you've never been exposed to it either. And by the liner notes, it sounds like it might be a good film. But probably not. Because we seldom if ever show good films, and we certainly would not want to disappoint you by doing something different and out of the ordinary. Right, Mr. Livingston? There is nothing about you nor this program that is ordinary. And rightly so. But that's not all. We'll also be joined as our guest, the amusing and witty uncle from the Adams Family, Uncle Festa himself, because we'll be chatting with Jackie Coogan, the man who originated the role back in the 60s. Wrong. And Mr. Coogan passed in 1984. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Joining us to talk about the Adams Family movies will be Mr. Christopher Lloyd, a fabulous thespian and comedian who... Wrong again. Well, shoes and socks, Livingston, who in God's name is sitting in my guest chair tonight? Mr. Eric Weiss. You know him. He's a young man who portrayed Uncle Fester in a recent local theater production of The Adams Family. Tell me, Mr. Livingston, why have you not obtained an actual celebrity to call upon our home in well over a month? You know quite well why. The thing? The thing. The thing, indeed. This is growing rather old. However, we shall make the absolute best of it, as I am quite familiar with this entertaining and talented young man. And while he is no Coogan nor Lloyd, I'm sure he will manage to render more than a few chuckles out of us all. So don't go up. Don't go away, for it's going to be another night of wonderful zombie fright right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome to Creature Features. It's that time of the week. You know that one that I love, you love, we all love, and Uncle Fester loves it as well. How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good under the circumstances. You know, this is going to be maybe one of the strangest episodes I've ever done because, uh, you know, <laughs> Uncle Fester from the Adams Family. So, you know, I have to ask you, how in God's name did you get that name? How did I get the name? Well, my name's Fester. It means to rot. It's a, it's a loving a family nickname. Well, so this this runs in your family. Oh, nickname. yes. Everyone in my family's got a rather bizarre names. I've got my mm. Uncle Lester. I've got Chester. I've got the Uncle uh, 
Well, there's another Esther we don't like to talk about. A bit of a social pariah. <laughs> and you're Fester. Oh, yes. Nice, nice. So, Adams, and you spell that with two Ds. Yes, right? with two Ds. Twice two as D. fun. Two Ds. Double D. He's a, like a double D. Oh, like you know, that. I think I'm more yeah. of a B cup. I've been on a diet. <laughs> right. So, so how was the trip up? Oh, I was a little rocky, a little good, just the way I like it. Of course, my uh, Chevrolet has nails in the seat so I can have a fun, bumpy ride. <laughs> That's the most bizarre thing I've ever had a guest say in that chair before. And you know, I've had some pretty, pretty famous butts in that seat. Oh, I know. I can smell them. <laughs> My goodness. So, um, the Adams Family Estate. Yes. It's a nice house. Is it bigger than mine or smaller? You know, it's actually remarkably similar in size and appearance. You shop at Sears, too? No, this place came uh, pre pre furnished. Pre funkified. Oh, no. I like it. it Not as much taxidermy as I'd like. You know, we have a polar bear. An actual polar bear. An actual, bear. well, we used to. I shot it with my flamethrower and burnt it to a crisp. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to find another oh one of those goodness. things. A flamethrower? A flamethrower. Oh. I right. got it. It was fun. A little target right. practice. No, that's a, well, I, is there like a scope on those things? How oh, no, do? no, no. You just got to pray you're pointing in the right direction. I like to close yeah. my eyes while I do it. Adds like to the mystique. Spray and pray. Oh, spray and pray. I like right, that. Right, I like it. All right, well, we're going to watch a movie tonight. Ooh. Teenage Zombies. Teenage Zombies. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. All right, neither have I. Uh, but I think it's going to be a good film. Good film. You know why? Because it's got teenagers and zombies. Those are popular uh, movie yeah. subjects. Right. Yes. right, I mean, you know, if you're going to be a zombie, Zombie, you might as well be a bit teenage one because it gives you room to like, you know, it's the best way to go through puberty. Oh, is it really? I don't I know. I mean, puberty's already I've, pretty horrifying, so it's not going to get any worse, is I, it? I've never been a zombie, so I, I could not tell you. You know, I know. never went through puberty. What happened? I don't know. It's just nothing. Nothing yeah. happened. That's what happened. So you're like, were you born a child or? Oh, I like... came out like this, full size. Oh. It was rather aerodynamic. I just slipped right out. You know, I, 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 I have pity on your poor mother. Oh, I, she wasn't complaining. Mm. You should see her. My goodness. All right, we're going to start the film, and we Ooh. come back. You're going to tell us everything about the Adams Family, right? Sounds lovely, Vincent. All right, off we go. Teenage Zombies, 1959. Don't you guys go away. You don't want to miss this guy. You want anything, boy? No. Daddy's waiting for me. I gotta leave in a couple of minutes. Two malts, 50 cents. Here's your chance, Kelly. Double or nothing. How do I know you've got the other half? Kelly, sometimes I don't think you're ever gonna get rich. Sometimes I worry about that myself. Hey, Rich, how about you and the other guys going horseback riding with me and Doc? Oh, we can't do it. I've been working all week on my boat. And it's running real good, and we're going to go water skiing. Oh, you guys, what a drag. All you ever do is water ski. Do you want to come along? No, I promised Dottie. Anyway, she's waiting for me at the stables. I'll tell you what. You go riding, we'll go water skiing, and I'll pick you up at 4 o'clock at the stables. Then we'll figure out something for tonight. You pick us up for sure? You know I wouldn't hang you up. Well, OK. I'll tell Dot, and I'll meet you at 4. 
Tell her I said to keep an eye on you. Oh, yeah, and check the stirrups. So big wind might come up. Very <laughs> funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, Frank, where you going? I'll never tell. What's the matter with him? Oh, he's been eating too much hay. He doesn't want to go water skiing. <laughs> wow. I mean, how weird can you get, huh? Are you ready? Yep, all set. Pam's making a lunch. Hey, and guess where we're going to eat it? In the boat? Nope. On an island. An island? Yeah, it's a real gas. Some guys told me about it. I've been all over that water, and I've never seen any island. You never went that far out. It's way out where, where the water's too rough to go skiing. Sounds crazy, Reg. Are you going to believe this scam? He's always coming up with some long shot. This time, it's an island. All right. I'll tell you what I'll do. If that island isn't there, I'll buy two new carburetors for your boat, and I'll put them both in myself. Come on, Rex, let's find out. All right. I told you this island was here. Nobody ever believes me. Funny we never knew about it. We do now. And it'll make a crazy spot for beach parties. Let's take a look around. Yeah, let's. or something. Couldn't have taken it far. Who couldn't have? Well, the people on this island. Maybe it floated out. No! I tied it real good. Well, let's not get panicky. It has to be somewhere on the shore, so let's circle around it.
This sure beats me. No landing, dock, or anything. They might have tied it up at a better place. We better go see. Not me. Julie and I'll wait for you here. <laughs> Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. There's no night like a fright night, and we're having a fright night right now because we've got Mr. Fester Adams with us. Hello. The legend. Uh, we're going to talk to you some more, but first we've got to talk about this film, Teenage Zombies. Ooh. They've gone to an island. A secret, spooky, mysterious, hidden ocean island. Well, you know, it seems like every single film with teenagers starts with like some trip to a place where they, they're not supposed to go. Is a cabin in the woods or a, someone gives them a house, a new house. Oh, your uncle, your famous uncle died. Here's his creepy mansion. Go live in it. Famous Uncle Festa. Never works wow. out too well. So so would you like fall for a trick like that? Where would it's I like... fall for Hell, I would move to a house just to do it for the fun. Oh. I love haunted houses. I live in one. Right. Is I it truly really, haunted? Really haunted? Well, it's, it's, it's more haunted with uh, us, you know, and our, oh. our ancient ancestors that roam right. the place. But it's not haunted in the traditional sense. At least so. it's, it's not scary to us. So if you were to, like, use, like, a Ouija board, what kind Ooh, of messages? I love Ouija boards. It's fantastic. The only problem is our ancestors stop us from getting anything uh, really important said by the, you know, the ghost right. and such. We, uh, we never really get anything right. good out of it. They just mess with us. Well, you know, I think people use them less now that we have the internet. Oh, yeah, you can just go online and find right. your ghosts. They're right. out there. Yeah. They need to make, like, a website that's like a, a, an electronic Ouija board. Ooh, I like right. that idea. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Well, I, I think that chap that owns Facebook is probably already working on it. Oh, I bet. He, he does things hey, well, like Him and that. the Russians, right. I suppose. <laughs> right. So, all right. So, you know, I remember watching your show. Oh, The Adams Family. The Adams Family. And you always did this thing with a light bulb. With a light bulb. You want to see my bulb? Oh, show me. Oh, that's the wrong bulb. <laughs> no, no. I want to see the light bulb trick. All right. <laughs> See, my body runs an electric current, sort of right. like a generator, so I right. can do fun things like this. Right. Oh, that's nice. Uh, uh, I can make it blink. No, oh, of course you can. Look at that. All right. <laughs> so You want to try? No, 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 I no. I moistened it for you. No, it's all right. You know, it's not sanitary to, oh, to, smart, to smart swap move. light bulbs. Very smart. You know, I've read that in a book somewhere. So uh, you must be quite a hit um, during blackouts. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right, right. I mean, you're like illuminating. Oh. <laughs> he enlightens people. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, when, when your, you know, ethnicity is paper and you shine like a Christmas bulb, it's a little easy to brighten up everybody's lives. You know, I was going to ask you about that. Is that like an iron deficiency or an something? An iron deficiency? Right. Well, I don't have what uh, you would typically call a normal human body system. There's right. no blood, just electric current. Oh, well, that's, that's nice, but so I suppose you have to be, like, recharged like a oh, robot. Oh, yes, yes. I, I would say most human beings use sleep time to recharge anyway, so it sort of works out for me. I have a plug. I won't tell you where it goes, but it works. Oh. Sort of like a Prius. Oh, that's nice. 220 or 120? Oh, as high as I can go. Oh, nice. And it's nice. direct current. None of this alternating garbage. I want to feel it directly, right. if you know right. what I mean. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, um, on that happy note, I think we should get back to the film. Oh, yes. Right. Let's find out what happens next. All right. So you stay with us. You guys stay with us because I don't know what this guy's going to do next. And uh, for now, we're going to get back to Teenage Zombies, 1959. Don't go away.
Well, the kids who ran off. How do you do? Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, we're, uh, we're looking for a boat. A boat? I tied it up down at the beach about an hour ago, and now it's gone. Won't you come in? I'll get you a soft drink. Oh, thanks, ma'am, but what do you do? Oh, yeah, uh, a soft drink. That'll be fine. young man. We have no use for boats here because no one leaves the island. Hey, Reg, remember that boat we saw last month without any skaters? Yeah, they must have been headed here. Whoever you saw, I'm sure was going elsewhere. Look, we don't care who comes here and who doesn't. But I think you know where our boat is, and we want it. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Okay. If that's the way you want it, we're going to go see the sheriff. Yeah. You certainly have a lot of courage. It's very flattering. Hey, that sounds like Julie and Pam. What are the girls doing here? Where are they? I'll find out for you. Ivan? Ivan, are the two girls there? That's fine, Ivan. We'll be down to see them. Your friends are downstairs. Come with me. have to excuse Ivan's manners. He's very strong and sometimes forgets himself. If you behave yourselves, he'll not hurt you. Hey, well, what are you going to do with us? I'll first answer your other question. We've taken care of your boat, and none of you will leave here. Instead, you will help me in some very important work. No one asked you here, but your curious nature will in turn aid me very much. Look, what kind of a creep joint is this? A place of research and discovery. A place where science is free from the interference of stupid politicians. Oh, yeah? Well, you won't get away with it. We've got some friends waiting for us. When we don't show up, they're going to follow us out here looking for us, and they're going to bust up this whole weird place. Please let us go. We'll promise never to tell anyone about it. I'm afraid that's impossible. And as far as someone discovering this island, well, that doesn't bother me in the least. 
You'll have to excuse me now. I have work to do. Remember what I said. Behave yourselves and you won't get hurt. Come, Ivan. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. Hi, kid. What you doing? I'm looking for Red. You seen him? Well, not since you were here this morning. How about Skip or Julie? No, they all left together right after you did. They were supposed to pick Dottie and me up two hours ago at the stables. Well, they went out in the boat, didn't they? Yeah. You think they might have had an accident? I don't know. When they didn't show up at the stables, I thought maybe Reg might have forgot. But since they haven't been here either, I don't know what to think. Maybe they ran out of gas. I thought they ran out of gas. They could have paddled in. It wouldn't have taken them this long. Where's Dottie? Well, she's still waiting down at the stables. You know, Maury, I've never been out there, but I understand those waters can be treacherous at times. I think the wisest thing for you to do is go see the sheriff. You'll know what to do. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'll uh, get Tommy to drive you out. Better stop by and pick up Dottie first. Yeah. I hope so. I'm, I'm Maury Timms. I, I live over in Compton County. Uh, so does Dottie. Well, what can I do for you, Maury? Well, we went water skiing today. No, I, uh, I mean, we didn't go water skiing. We, we went horseback riding, but, well, Reg and the other kids... Don't let me tell you, Maury. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Well, the kids we run around with, four of them, they went water skiing, and they were supposed to pick us up at four o'clock. Uh, at the stables, where we went riding. But they didn't come, not at four or five or six. What kind of a boat did they have? Well, it's well, it's got a homemade hull and a souped-up V8 engine. Was it likely to break down? Well, no, I don't think so. You see, Reg, well, he keeps it in tip-top condition all the time. Well, I think you better talk to the sheriff about this. Let's hear all about it. Well, we were afraid the boat tipped over something because they were supposed to pick us up a long time ago. Yeah. What direction they went? No, they just went water skiing. No special direction. Well, now, we have about 800 square miles of water out there. That'll be difficult for us to search an area like but that. But you got to do something. You just got to. Now, now, don't misunderstand me. We'll do the very best we can, of course. You tell Regan to pick up searching immediately. You and I will relieve him at 5 in the morning. Can we go with them? I'm afraid not, miss. It's practically dark. Do you kids have a car? Well, no, not one of my own. Then I'll drive you two home. Oh, uh, thanks, but could you drive me down to Reggie's car? I'd like to drive it. Reggie doesn't like to leave it outside. All right. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. I like what you're doing with your hair there. Well, you know, it's. I think I got to get it cut because it's like going flat. I should maybe go see your barber. Oh, you should. Oh, I nice. actually, uh, when I grow hair, it looks a little bit like that Play-Doh thing where you push it out, it comes out like a Cupid doll. Just no, that's <laughs> what they call that, a Chia Pet. Ah.
I like That'd it. That'd be nice, a Chia pet. Got All it. right, so let's talk about this movie. Ooh. You know this film was shot in five days. Five days? Five days. It probably takes you longer to do your hair. No, it <laughs> uh, well, it takes it takes longer for me to get it colored. Ooh. You know, because it's, it's not normally this black. Do you use real coal? No, no, they use this thing called murder. Murder. No, it's just a bottle that says murder. Murder. That's it. You like that? Murder, murder. you It's say. a good name. It's a good name. So uh, the film, it was filmed at the Salton Sea. Ooh. I hear that it's like a big lake and it's like the fish are dying. Oh, yeah. I took a bath in there one time, just ruined it for everybody. Oh, that's why. <laughs> that's right. All right. Well, if you're just joining us, we are with Uncle Festa from the Adams Family and we are talking about the Adams Family, right? Yes. I had a question for you. Sure. TV show was one style, and the movies were a different style. What's your preference? Well, seeing as uh, my, you know, character was in both of them, I had to sign off on the rights for both. And what? I have to say, I liked what Jackie Coogan did. You know, he brought the sort yeah. of the, the comedy to it, and he had the high voice. Uh -huh. But at the same time, I thought Christopher Lloyd brought a little more darkness to it, you know, when he liked the Bermuda Triangle and all sorts of things. <laughs> Nice. I've seen the movie a couple times, so I learned how to do uh, the different versions oh, of, course, of me. Of course, So, you know, you could probably do, um, you know, the uh, the guy from Back to the Future as well. Craig Scott! My name is Scott. We got 1.21 gigabytes! Right. That's pretty good. We should we should see if we got a costume in back for you Ooh. to do, you know. Might need a, a wig, well, though. A wi uh, like a crazy wig. Oh, we could find some. I'm sure Tangela's got something for you. Ooh. She's got a nice collection of wigs. All right, so uh, Adam's family, and yes. then, so Morticia. Morticia, oh, my loving sister. Who was the better Morticia? Who was the better Morticia? Right. Mm. Well, I have to say, Angelica Houston had the coolness down, you know? She really, right. every time she talked, it kind of just brought you down a little bit. It was very right. uh, sensual, very, you know, uh, right. romantic in a way. Right, right. Yeah. Angelica Houston, you know, she's done other films as well. She has. I don't know which ones, but I know she's been into it. Well, three. that's very good for her. No, it's nice. It's nice. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know who I actually met? Who? Is um, the young girl who was on the show. Oh. She played Wednesday. Little Wednesday. And I, I can't recall the actress's name. Tom, do you remember? No, he doesn't remember either. But we met her at a convention, and she was quite nice. Oh, how lovely. Right, no. But she charged me like $5 for an autograph. Well, she is into torture, so I suppose well, that is a way. No, no, no. I, I wanted to do a trade, like a swap, oh. like my autograph for hers. And she said, oh, this sounds good, but uh, who in God's name are you? <laughs> Is what she said. So, you know, that did not That's work out one. well for me. I was out, you know, two quid. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's fine. It's 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 all right. I mean, maybe someday. Maybe right? someday. We'll see. All right. I'm getting the signal. We got to back, get back to the film. Sounds good. And when we see you, you're going to be in a different mode. I look a little mode, different. A different mode. All right. You guys stay with us. Let's get back to teenage zombies, and we'll be back with uh, somebody in this seat. We'll see you soon. Stay with us, because we're getting back to the film right about now. Any luck, Sheriff? I'm sorry, son. Nothing yet.
I wish it was something we could do to help. Hey, let's take one of Wally's boats and look around. Wally won't mind. You know, as we were pulling up, I could have sworn I saw somebody walking. You must be carried away. If they were here, we'd have seen the boat. Look! I told you I saw somebody. Come on! Are you looking for someone? Uh, we saw a man back there. We were uh, trying to find him. He's gone now. Can I help you? Well, I, I guess you can. Uh, we were going to ask him if, if he saw anybody, uh, four kids, in a boat around here yesterday. Well, I'm sure he didn't. Neither did I. You see, we were both inside all day yesterday. Do you live here? Of course. Would you like to take a rest? Uh, no, I... Uh, we, we better get going. You see, we're searching the water for our friends. We think they might have drowned. Why, that's terrible. I hope to find them safe and well. Are you sure you wouldn't like a sandwich or something before you go? Uh, no, I, I think not. Uh, thanks anyway. Uh, <sighs> I bet you don't get many visitors out here. No one ever comes here. Oh, um, well, uh, goodbye. Uh, uh, thanks for the information.
snoopers we saw by the water. There's some kids looking for their friends. I don't like people around here. There's too much at stake. You know people are of no concern. Besides, I'm the one who has to stay here, not you. A slip up now will ruin everything. You don't have to worry. I know exactly what I'm doing. That's what we're here to find out. How is the work progressing? Very well. I hope to complete phase three this week. Phase three? You were on that the last time we were here. And now it's nearly completed. What do you expect in four months? We expect results. We must have results and soon. Tell me, Doctor, what's the chance of finishing the research within six weeks? You mean the research or the actual completion of a perfect capsule? I mean the completion of 5,000 capsules ready to drop. I received orders from the east that we must move in another direction unless your capsules are ready in time. You mean hydrogen bombs? Yes. Fools. The stupid fools. What good is land that you can't use or go near for years? You know, of course, that we don't control these things. Well, what about it? Can you speed up the work? It is possible. But I've run into a factor that may give us trouble. Come and see for yourself. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Mr. Eric had to step away. Uh, you know, I think he's getting out of that silly costume of his. Do you think so? Oh, it looks like it like scratches his neck. Hmm. You know, I, I can't wear things like this. I cannot wear a turtleneck because I feel like a miniature monkey is on my back strangling me. It's a true story. How Anyways, odd. we're going to do letters, right? Yes. How are you, Mr. Livingston? I am well. I have right. a bit of a frog in my throat, but otherwise. Did she feed you a frog? I'm not sure. That would not be nice. She likes frogs, so I don't think she would do that. And how about you, Tangella? How are you? All right? You know, she was dancing earlier, so this gloomy thing she's doing now is, is an act. She's like a thespian. All right, so uh, I, I have nothing to read. I need mail to read from you, from us, to us. Right? Yes. Right. All right, this uh, first letter is from Kurt Mitchkin. And he's from Poughkeepsie, New York. I like that name. It's a nice word. It's like how you keep your po, Poughkeepsie. And he goes, uh, dear Creature Features, your show sucks. Well, that's not a very nice way to start letters. Your guests and the movies are garbage. Your host is boring. The butler is a stupid idiot. But the dumbest thing of all is that spaghetti-headed girl that sits in that chair with the dolls. Is she mental or something? You guys should get real jobs. Yours truly, Kurt Mitchkin. Well, you know, I don't know uh, what to say about that, Kurt. I, I, I bet other people in Poughkeepsie, New York, are much kinder than you. Right? Right. Next letter, sir. Where's she off to? I don't think she was amused. She does kind of have spaghetti head a bit, a wee bit. Don't say that too loud. All right. This one is from Carrie in Isle La Motte, Vermont. And uh, are you fixing my hair? And she goes, uh, 
or maybe, or he. It's hard to tell with a name like Carrie. True. You know, Carrie Grant, or it could be like Carrie Underwood. You don't know. Hmm. It's strange. All right. Uh, they go. Hello, Vincent Livingston and Tangella. My wife. Okay, so I know. It's, a, it's, a, it's like Cary Grant. No. My wife and I very much enjoy your program, and we're very glad to be able to continue to watch it on the Internet after moving away from California. You know, we're on a few other stations as well, not just uh, Coffee TV 20. We're also on a bunch of many small stations True. across the U.S., like 50 of them now. Uh, we were trying to identify all the films from the clips in your opening credits. There are some we have not been able to identify. Could you please give us a list of them? All right, so we get this question all the time. And there's a little secret. Don't tell anybody, Carrie, in Isle Lamont, Vermont. But if you go on, like, on YouTube or on television and you turn on closed captioning, then the closed captions will tell you which each of those movies are from in the clip, right? I never knew that. A clever thing. No, well, one night they were showing it in a, in a pub I was in, our show, and they had the, the captions on. And I said, look, the names of the movies are all there. Somebody behind the scenes was quite clever with that. All right. Well, thanks for writing, Carrie, and we will uh, hopefully hear from you again. And the last letter from Mr. Livingston. Well, not from me. I know. This is from Mr. Jojo Matrice. That's quite a name. Quiet. I like that name, Jojo. You should name one of your dogs Jojo. Or Jim Jim. Or something like that. All right. Dear Vincent, Big L, and Little T. Little T. I like that. It Big makes you sound like L. some kind of rapper. And it makes you sound like a, a hamburger. Rapper? Hamburger. Hamburger rapper. I like this. This is going well. This is Jojo Matrice, and I hail from the great city of Boston, Massachusetts. I love Boston. You know why? Because there's lots of bricks. All the buildings are made from bricks. We don't have, to, we don't have that out here because they fall in the earthquakes. I found your show and have been binge watching your past episodes. Now faithfully watching your live broadcasts since March 2020. So March, it's now May-ish. All right. Much love from Boston, Massachusetts. Keep up the good work. P.S. I bet Mr. Livingston is the bedrock that holds it all together. Well, you know, he, he's, you can put your nose down now. He, he does like important business things, but you know, all the creative stuff is really done by Tangela most of the time. Um, please read on the show, The Kids Will Love It. I hope you're talking about your kids because I don't have any. Thanks for writing. Is that it? That's it. All right. If you'd like to send us a letter yourself, use the email you see appearing down here. If you'd like to send something in the post, use the address you see appearing here. And we will be right back with Mr. Eric Wise soon. But first, we've got to get back to Teenage Zombies. You're not going to actually mail that thing, are you? He called me an idiot. This is the first capsule that was used on subject one. It proved much too strong as the subject died in five hours. I worked out this highly concentrated buffer and tested it on four separate subjects. And the results? About zero consistency. Have a look. If you'll notice, the subjects are direct opposites. One has no spark, no desire for anything. The other teems with rage. What about that fellow we saw last month? His reaction was perfect. Ivan, the perfect slave. Desire to work, perfect health, and obeys every command. With half the people on Earth in his condition, we'd have the epitome of civilization. In the bombing of the United States, how many would turn out like him? Not enough to take care of the wild ones. You couldn't possibly drop the pellets as they now exist. Then you must find out what it is about Ivan that produced the effect. I've performed every practical test on him. 
His body chemistry is basically the same as the rest. Well, you'll have to figure it out. I don't believe it can be done in short time. But there is an alternative. What's that? It might prove dangerous. But if time is of the essence, I worked out a formula using a completely different paralyzing agent. It rushes directly to the nervous system and can be dropped as a gas. And also, it will be difficult to detect in the American water systems. Is it dangerous to us? Not in the way you would imagine. The problem is, it can be contracted. You mean it's not lasting? Effective and lasting. Until someone discovers what would bring the subjects back to normal. Can't you do something? Strengthen it? You want the people alive and strong so they can work and obey their superiors. If I increase the gas, they'd mostly die. But if they cannot think for themselves, how can they possibly reason a counteragent would help them? That's where we would have to gamble. At least until we had time to develop a second gas. How effective is it? I'll give you a demonstration. Ivan, I'm preparing a test. Be ready to stand by. You'll now be able to see the effect taken by a near human subject. I think you'll agree this one has plenty of fight in him. seconds his temper completely suppressed I won't even have to lock him up anymore although unlike a man he's not useful after I run some tests Ivan will destroy him no conscience feeling at all. From now on, he'll move exactly as he's directed. If only this could be permanent. If only we hadn't been betrayed. We'd have the time. What are you talking about? Who betrayed us? Do you remember Felis, our contact in South America? The one that helped you with the passport? Very well. I last saw him in Buenos Aires. The reason that passport looked so good was because it was a legitimate one. We recently found out that he was a United States federal agent. Where is he now? Dead. But we don't know whether or not he had enough time to contact his office about this operation. This is the reason for the change in time element. If he did talk to the Pentagon, they'd soon find this place. Then it's up to you. If you want to take a chance with what you saw, then I'll hurry along with a final test. I have four human subjects to use. Four new ones? The friends of those kids you saw outside. Are you sure they won't be back? I rather doubt it. But if they do, we can handle them. We better stay here a few days, just in case. Send them right in, please. Did you bring everything they found? His suitcase contained mostly clothing and personal belongings. I have all the papers we located, but I'm afraid they don't help much. He couldn't carry anything of importance with him. 
Is there any chance of finding the body? If we do, it probably won't tell us much. The murderer has undoubtedly checked his clothing. Everything addressed to Felix. Is that the only name he used? He used the name Felix in Argentina and Mexico. Even the police in Buenos Aires were unaware of his identity. We have other agents in Buenos Aires. Why didn't he contact them? Colonel, we felt this assignment was the most critical we've ever been on. We tried to avoid any possible channel of detection, even our own agents. Your caution certainly didn't seem to pay off. Well, I suppose you're right. But we do have one thing, a photograph. This might lead us to their headquarters. First, we're sending copies of this photo to every law enforcement agency in the country. Every city, county, and state officer will be on the lookout for her. Second, we'll detach troops from bases in this area and cover the entire state. When we finish there, we'll move to another until we've covered the western states, then move eastward. I'll contact General Mundy for additional helicopters in that area. With your permission, sir, I'd like to also request Marine and Navy helicopters and every reconnaissance plane the Air Force has available. That's a big order. I hope we can fill it. It must be filled. Do you realize, Colonel, that if we don't find their base and stop them now, before they distribute this gas in rivers and water supplies across the nation, we'll be able to save, at best, 20% of the population when they strike. My name is Barry from Kel City, Indiana, and I'd like to see uh, some Godzilla movies played on Creature Features, like Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Biollante, things like that. And I really think Creature Features is really cool. Thanks. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are no longer still with Vester Adams. We're with Eric Weiss. Hello. The actor. You know, you've lost some weight. I have. I uh, took the uh, the fat suit off and I look uh, slightly less pale, but not by much. No, no. You look wonderful for Thank somebody you. who was just like all fested up. Oh, yeah, we had a, you know, a whole uh, pit crew team back there ripping mm -hmm. all the stuff off. So if you didn't figure it out, it wasn't really Uncle Festa we had. It's just, just a thespian, an actor... A very good one, though. Thank very you. Very good Thank one. Thank you, So, Uncle Festa, uh, how'd you get into that? Well, uh, I've been a lifelong Adams Family fan. Right. Um, I grew up with the TV show, which is interesting, because as a millennial, it wasn't, you know, it's not like it was super popular when right. I was a kid, but right. I watched a lot of, you know, the Three Stooges right. and the Marx Brothers and old TV, and so I got a whole lot of the Adams Family. And then I saw all the movies from the 90s with Raul Julia and oh, Angelica right. Houston and Christopher Lloyd. And that was really what solidified my love of Created the Adams Family. Many new fans for the old show. Oh yeah. Right. And right. then uh, a couple years back, I did the Adams Family musical at uh, yes. Spreckles Performing Arts right. Center, we saw which that. you saw. You right. did come and see it right. with your uh, your friends, your spooky friends. Right. And after you that, did. I got to play Fester in that show. And after that, I realized that I could do. Because I never thought I could play Fester. I'm not actually bald. I have a full head of hair. I shaved my head to right. be Fester. Right. So I really never thought I could do it. I'm young, I'm skinny, and I have hair. But uh, the director gave me the opportunity because he knows that I do the voices and the characters and the creepy faces. And so he, he trusted me to put on a fat suit and to shave right. my head. It was in my contract that I had to shave my head. Well, of course. Said so no, no bald caps. too much work. Oh yeah. yeah Plus I sweat. I sweat bullets, so right. I would it would just melt off my face. Yeah, anyway. much more comfortable that way. Yeah. So he's right. We did see that performance, and it was I was very impressed with Thank the entire you. cast and Thank uh, you, the presentation. You know, I thought I was just going to see like a school play. Oh no, no, no. no the local theater oh, in, uh, in Sonoma County and the Greater Bay Area is just 
No, top, you did a wonderful level. job. Wonderful job. So um, on this movie. The Brazilian mad scientist woman. Yeah, with a, she, she's got an, a gorilla. A gorilla. Failed experiment yeah. gorilla. Yeah, I've never seen this film. Most of these films I've seen before, and I slightly remember them, but this one is, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. It's, it's not, not too, too good, bad. But it's not too bad. A little on the cheesy side, but that's it's kind not of too the great, fun, But it's it? not too horrible. Not I feel like every mad scientist island movie needs to have a creature like that, a gorilla or, you know, Marlon Brando with a dwarf. Like, it's got to have some sort of... Like... Something. Fantasy Island? Yeah, like Fantasy Island or uh, oh. what's it, the, uh, the Island of Dr. Moreau. Oh. Kind of, yeah. I remember that one. That's one of the weirdest movies Didn't I've ever it, seen. The last one they made was uh, in the 70s? Yeah. Yeah, yeah quite yeah. some time ago. They had uh, Richard Chamberlain, I think. Ooh. I think so. Wow. I don't know. It's a long <laughs> time ago, you know. Memories, know. you know, they come and go with me. Yeah. It's strange. It's strange. All right. Well, we're going to get back to this film, but when we come back, we're going to talk some more about the the acting stuff you do Sounds because lovely. you know I like actors. We get quite a few here sometimes. All right, you guys stay with us. We shall be right back. That's it. Clean as a whistle. Come on. you. Every time he comes here, I'm afraid he's going to open the door. The way he looks at me. I don't think he can do a thing unless he's told to. He must be under some powerful drug. Maybe he can't hear us when we talk. Oh, he can hear us all right. Look, it's a good thing he didn't notice the broken lock. He probably won't be back for a while. You'll have time to open ours. No, I think we better wait till the last minute. Well, if he notices the broken lock, we'll be cooked. But now you've got the time. Look, Julie, getting out of, getting out of these cages isn't even half the battle. If we can get through that hall and outside, we've got a chance. But we've still got to get off this island. And we can't swim. Hey, look. Look, Reg and I can sneak out of here tonight after it gets dark. Then we can go down by the water and, l and look for the boat, huh? If you find it, we'll still be locked up here. And what happens if you don't find it? It's got to be around here somewhere. And if there's anyone out there, Skip and I alone will have a better chance of not being seen. Yeah. Now, we'll be back before morning with the boat all set up. Then we make a run for it, hop in the boat and take off. It sounds fine. Except if anything goes wrong, we're still locked in here. Can't you fix this lock before you go? I don't think we'll be as lucky with that one. We'll probably have to break it into pieces. If he comes back here tonight, he'll notice it for sure. Hey, look, look, when everything's all ready, a little noise won't matter then. A couple of good whacks and we're all set. Reg, be careful out there. If they see you, they'll now, Julie, forget it. 
We'll be back before daylight. And if they do catch us, we can't be any worse off than we are right now. It's probably dark by now. Skip, come on. Sun's nearly up. Yeah. Sort of hate to face the girls. If I were a channel swimmer, I could make it in about 10 hours. We hadn't walked around so much, we could have built a raft. Wait a minute. We could still get a good start on it. You know, Skip, sometimes you really amaze me. Come on! Did you find it? Can we get out of here? Well, it's almost daylight. We'll have to wait. But you found the boat. No. But it's okay. We're building a raft. A raft? It's our only chance. We'll have it finished tomorrow night, then we take off. Hey, we better get inside. They might be getting up. Right. And we better get some sleep. Where's the 
back now. Oh, come on, Reds is right. Let's get some Reds. We hid it down by the water. Just keep your fingers crossed that they don't find it. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Oh, the sheriff, please. Oh, that's right, the sheriff's office. Thank you. Sheriff's office. Johnson. Uh, hello? Hello, this is Maury Tins. Yeah, Maury. Uh, listen, we were out in the boat today, and we came across something real strange. Oh, we found this island. We think the kids might be there. I see. Well, look, Maury, I'm due to go out on a call right now. The sheriff isn't here, so you'd better go see him in his home. His address is... 33 Elmwood Road. Can you find it? Well, yeah, I guess so. Oh, we're not too far from there. I'll leave right now and catch him. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Kids, come on in. Sorry to have to bother you at home, Sheriff. Oh, that's all right, but we still haven't found anything. I think we did. Not a boat or anything, but we found something that sure looked funny. Well, what'd you see? Well, we were out there in the water, in, in this boat we borrowed. Well, we were looking all around like you. Well, we went way over toward the east. Must have gone about, oh, 30, 40 miles. We came to this real weird place. It was an island. Yeah, real strange like. I didn't even know it was there before. Well, that must be Mullet Island. There used to be some buildings on it about 50 years ago. That sounds like it. Well, anyway, we thought it was worth looking at, so we went there and we talked to this woman. And you she... talked to someone on Mullet Island? Yeah, she lived there. I can't believe anyone could be living on that old island. There's no facilities. She lives there, all right. We saw her. Well, how odd. I wonder why anyone would pick that place. Well, what'd she say? Had she seen anything of the boat or the kids? She said she hadn't seen anybody, but we think she was lying. Now, what makes you think that? Well, we didn't think too much about it at the time. We wanted to look around the water some more, but Di brought it up on the way back. I'm sure she lied to us, Sheriff, and she might know something about the kids she's not telling. Now, wait a minute. If people want to live in isolation, that's their own business. They have that right. Don't you jump to conclusions just because this woman may have looked, uh, well, a little odd. It's not that. It's, well, she... Now, look here. You're all upset about this thing. And it's a terrible experience. But do you really think that a person, well, anyone, would see your friends and then deliberately say they hadn't? What possible reason could they have? Well, we don't know. That's why we came to you. I think you both let your imaginations run away with you. Now, I suggest you go home and let me handle this search. But I have to tell you the truth. I'm not too optimistic about it, after all the area we've covered. Have you been out to the island? 
Now, do you actually believe that your friends would go out there and stay this long? Well, no. Not unless they couldn't get off. She lied to us, Sheriff. I know she did. She told us no one ever came out there. And as we left, a boat was just arriving. Have you kids been home to dinner or any place since coming back from out there? No, we didn't want to waste any time looking for you. All right. If we get the boat now and ride out there and have a look around, will that give you any satisfaction? Yeah, but well, if we find anything? Are you sure you can handle it by yourself? I think so, Maury. And if not, I've got a radio in the boat. It'll take a few minutes for the solution to drop to the right temperature before I can combine it. Will there be a temperature problem in the water supplies? Not after I once set the exact formula. The molecules will spread rapidly and actually become a part of the water. And you say it'll only take a few hours to reach the full effect? Between one and three hours, the bacteria should be everywhere. By that you mean including the nerve gas? The pellets can be of any size you think necessary. Large ones will, of course, spread more gas rapidly in the essential areas. I just hope the effects are as good as we anticipate. You won't be disappointed. I'm about ready for the test. If you'll excuse me a second. Ivan, we're ready for the two girls. Would you bring them in, please? Kill them. Well, we can't rush them. They must have guns. If we'd have only gotten out of here last night.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, uh, Eric Weiss, actor and thespian and uh, all around nice guy. This is not really much of a zombie film. Though, I have is not it? really seen any zombies in this uh, in this film yet. You know, I I think there should be a law that states quite specifically that if you say zombie in your film title, there should be at least one zombie. That's right? false advertising. That's and, false advertising. And if there's only one, you can only say zombie. So this would be teenage zombie. Yeah. But if you say teenage zombies, there must you be. You would expect at three, least one, at least three or more. Zombie. If there's yeah. zombies, maybe the monkeys. Yeah, that maybe would be a great a film. Do you think that the gorilla might, for no, all intents I, and purposes, be no, a zombie? No, I just had an epiphany. Listen, zombies. Zombie. <laughs> zombie. Be an excellent bees. film. It could be a uh, you know a sting. Infection, they get stung. Right. No, you get into... stung by a bee. You know, I got stung by the other day by a bee. Just just day before yesterday, I Ouch. got stung by a bee. Are you allergic? Or no. Just... No, thank okay. goodness. But the poor bee died. It was wow. a honey yeah. bee. Yeah, stung if I drank your blood, I'd probably die too. No, well, you know, I thought it was an aunt. And you thought it was an ant? Like one of the biting kind of ants. Oh, ouch. And I looked and it was like a stinger and like a poor bee lying on the ground oh. dying. Aww. No, I felt terrible, and it stung at the same time. Ooh. So I don't know if the tears came from, like, pity or from pain. You have so much empathy. And it's one of those things. All right, enough about the film. Let's talk about you. Sure. So, um, acting. Yes. You know, I want to be an actor. You How do. did you get into this? Well, uh, when I was about six years old, my parents saw that I had too much energy, which is kind of the, the typical actor story. Kid running around in circles, doing well, funny voices. Did they give you that drug? That uh, No, luckily, um, no Ritalin for me. Okay, uh, good, I'm glad yeah. they, they didn't, because right. almost every character I play has some sort of manic so energy like to it. So it's Ritalin or acting? Yeah, that's, you got to choose one. you got to put all that hyperactivity into it. Right into something so I'm, 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 I'm kind of a hyper actor if you so, uh, put it. oh I like that hyper actor mm. so you were a child actor mm -hmm. well I didn't you know I auditioned for some commercials and stuff when I was a kid but even as a child I got this vibe from it that I didn't really gel with mm. you know a bunch of snot-nosed kids who don't even care about acting and their parents right. are there so that they could live the dreams they never got, right. you know? And it was, it, was, it was like, a, it was, you know, it was some big company for child actors and they had me read a, a pop serial commercial. And I just, right. even as a, you know, I don't know, 10 year old, I thought, eh, this So is what changed? Weird. Well, I, I found theater. I discovered theater when uh -huh. I was, uh, you know, I don't know, 10 or something. I saw the 1956 black and white NBC Peter Pan with, uh, I think it's Mary Martin and Cyril Richard. I've never seen it. Oh, it's lovely. It's, right. it's you know, the musical Peter Pan, but they, it was the first NBC filmed musical, which now NBC has been doing again. They did like Grease or something and some other, you know, Jesus oh, nice. Christ Superstar. Right. Uh, but it was something that was really big in the 50s is they would take a, the Broadway show that was really popular, put it in a studio and film it. And I got a hold of the VHS when I was a little kid and just couldn't believe that somebody was making money to be Captain Hook. Oh, wow. And so I started, you know, doing classes and camps. So do you have like a preference for musicals? No, I've been, I've been singing my whole life, right. but I, it's really more about character for me. So there, right. there are characters in both musicals and straight plays that I really, it's not even about relating to as much as, is there something interesting I can do with it? So I play a lot of bizarre characters like Uncle right. Fester he's barely even a person, you know, right. he's like a weird moon man. And then you've got, I've done a lot of physical comedy farces and falling down stairs. I did one play where I had to do a sword fight and I fell into the orchestra pit. 
Oh my goodness. Every night for months, just a full pew into the, you know, I've done a lot of stunt Good work and, but well, I also, you know, I like just, doing Just a, a bit drama. of a tip. That's a young man's It is a young job. man's game. You know, don't plan to do this game. for the next no. 20 years. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's like Jerry Lewis fell on right. a, a mic cable one time, hurt his back when he was like 30 something, rest of his life, and back pain. He died, right? Yeah. Well, I don't think he died from the mic thing. Uh, I think he was old. But, but he did but die eventually. Of, I, yeah, yeah. Unless he's still yeah. walking around as a, as a teenage zombie. Uh, uh, that'd be but, terrible. That'd be terrible. That's a nice segue. Let's get back to this film, and we'll come back. We're going to find out what Mr. Eric is doing next. And I don't think it's Uncle Festa. You guys stay with us. Now, gentlemen, if you'll watch carefully, you'll see the exact effect working on the human system. Well, look who we have here. How are you, Mr. Sheriff? Not so good. I've got a couple of real inquisitive kids here. I knew there'd be trouble. They won't be any trouble. I think they'll help us instead. What's going on here, Sheriff? Who are these people? Mary, look! It's Julia in town! You see? You see, she did lie. The kids are prisoners here. Not prisoners. We prefer to call all of you our guests. Ivan. <laughs> Sheriff, do something. Sheriff! Sheriff, you let us go! Then do you no good. The sheriff won't help you. I'd like to talk to you, Doctor. Well, certainly, Sheriff. What is it? Look, our deal was that I'd supply you with drunks and prisoners. But this time, you've gone too far. These subjects are no different from the ones you brought me. No, except that they have families that want to find them. This search is getting publicity on the outside, and I can't control it. We can't stop now. Not for anything. You have to give us a little more time. We'll have to move fast. But we'll need some pieces of pipe. Or clubs. I'll see what I can find. wits about this thing. After all, we haven't been discovered yet. And I don't believe we'll need any more people over here. What do you think, Doctor? I was never one to complain over a simple problem. Simple problem? Do you realize? I do realize. And I also understand thoroughly what we're all expected to do. I'm doing my job under the same conditions as you. Only I don't complain about every problem I run into. Very well, then. Perhaps you should appoint someone to take my place. Perhaps we will. All right. Do what you think best. Let me know what you decide. We certainly will. The fool. Didn't he know that none can quit? We'll have to hurry now. Ivan, take him outside. Or do you want these two? Keep them there. They'll serve as a second test. Look, we've got to move now or it's too late. Go to the door and let the girls out. What's that?
On your feet! Come on! Keep them covered, Maury. Right. Their minds are gone, just like the rest. Yeah, well, she knows how to bring around, and she's going to do it. Right. Get started. Started with what? You know what I mean. Something to take care of Julie and Pam. There's nothing I can do for them. You'd rather feel a few bullets burn through you. Go ahead and kill me if you like. If that will help them. Look! You invented this stuff. It figures you can do something about it. If I could, I wouldn't. So you're wasting your time. Your time's gonna burn out if you don't do what I say. Hey, hey, listen, Reg. When that gas is poured on someone, they lose their will, don't they? Yeah. After that, they do as they're told. Yeah, I see what you mean. Okay. Which way do you want it? All right, then get moving. Tell them don't go through it. Try it, you fool. How do you release the stuff? Hey, I think this is it right here. that again. All right, now. Now, let's have it. Come on. Now, you know what we want. Come on. Something that'll fix the girls. Come on, now. I'm not kidding. Hold it, Skip. You understand me? Hold it. I mean it. We're doing something wrong. You two guys, come over here. All right. If you guys want to stay alive, you better do as we say. We can do nothing. Tell me how to get through to her. I don't know. We're not scientists. You know all about this gas, though. Hey, maybe she's an exception. What do you say we put one of them in there, huh? We'll get them to talk. Yeah, I'll buy that. Okay, you. Let's go. I said move. No, wait. I'll tell you. I don't know exactly which one it is, but if I show us where it is.
think that's the one. What do you mean you think that's the one? Well, she, she only mentioned it once. I think that's the mixture to counteract the gas. Now, this might be poison. Well, let's give it to her first. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. We have to stop them. The police boat. We'll have to put it away with the other boats before they reach it. I doubt if you can make it to the water. Let's go! With pleasure.
headquarters in a couple of minutes. Over. Unit two, we're waiting. 10 4. The Army will be very grateful to you kids. You know, it's funny that the picture of that woman just arrived this morning. You know, I'll bet if that sheriff had been here, you wouldn't have seen it at all. I guess you're right, Maury. I expect a full investigation of this office. We had a lot of prisoners unaccounted for. We saw quite a few men on the island. I guess they must have been the ones. Poor devils. I hope we can do something for them. I'm Major Coleman. Are you Johnson? I was placed in temporary charge of the substation. From what I understand, the job will be permanent. And these must be the kids that cracked a ring the Army couldn't even locate. They sure did, sir. And we're mighty proud of them. Well, if we did anything, sir, it was to save our own neck. <laughs> most of us were scared stiff most of the time. Nonetheless, you accomplished it. And you performed a great service. This group was the largest menace to United States security we've ever had. Wow. Hey, you think maybe we'll get a medal, huh? Oh, there you go. I swear, Skip, you remind me of a walking comic book. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with being famous? I can just see the headlines. Football star cited for bravery. Oh. Football star? <laughs> if you ever get off the bench, I'll personally give you a medal. Oh, wow, Pam, you sure are a drag, you know that? Hey, uh, I was talking about next year. I believe there'll be rewards for all of you. In a few days, you'll be going to Washington, D.C., where you'll be interviewed by the president himself. In the meantime, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. <clears throat> Major Coleman. Yes? Did you say you'd do anything we asked, sir? If it's at all possible, of course. Well, sir, I, uh... I mean, Skip and I, we sort of... Well, sir, there's a secret boat dock somewhere on that island. And we looked and looked for it. And I'm going to flip if I don't see it. Can we go with you when you go to search for it? I've got something at stake, you know. My boat's there, and I've got to get it back. Son, I'm sure you're perfectly welcome. Come back in about two hours, and we'll be glad to take you with us. Thank you, sir. Hey, crazy. Hey, how about that? Well, what do you say we all have a ball, huh? Let's go water ski. Yeah. What do we use for a boat? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Anybody for horseback riding? And that's Finito on Teenage Zombies. You know, do you think they actually received the Medal of Honor when they finally got to the president? I mean, I would hope. They had to, you know, they had to fight a lot of I mean, circumstances there. I would hope they got something out of the they situation. They deserved it. And you know, that was quite a fight at the end. It was oh, kind of yeah, like was in like that movie. What was they that? Live. They, they Live. They Live. We were talking about right, that. Right. It was, what was it, seven minutes long? That was one of the best fights ever. I don't think this one is, was as good. As They Live? No. no can't beat no. They Live. Yeah. All right. Anyways, all right, movie. Maybe we'll show it again in, what, two years or something? It was all right. Whoa! Well, oh, sorry. Wow. Were you there the whole time? Indeed. Well, oh. you know, he's, he's like, that's, that's like his job. Huh. He needs to be ready to help. And I think he's here because Tangela is not. Where is she? She is dressing up as a Wednesday Adams character. Oh, Ooh, I like her. We're going to have to get you back into we'll your Uncle Festa outfit and we can like have a, a duo skit session. That's a great idea. Something. Perhaps I could portray Gomez. I think you could pull off a very good Gomez. No, I'd have to like slick my hair back a and then put yeah. a little thing. Just don't ask me to be the butler. Oh, no, he would be a wonderful lurch, would he uh. not? 
don't see any similarities. No, he can play the harpsichord. You can. He's quite talented. Oh, oh multifaceted. But he only pl plays music from the 16th century. Hey, that's the best yeah. music. Yeah. Never. It got was better. my time. It was. It was. All right. So Eric Weiss, yes. what are you doing next? Next. Well, I have an internet show. If you thought I was funny, you'll probably like the show. It's called The Weiss Films Show. My channel Weiss is films? Weiss Films. One word. Weiss Films. It's, that, that sounds like somebody trying to say something else with a lisp. It does. It does sound. And there's a lot Weiss of S's in it. Films. Weiss's Films. But it's a uh, sketch comedy puppet right. show on YouTube. You can also find it on Instagram right. and Facebook. Of course. Yeah. Sketch comedy with puppets. With sketch comedy with puppets, yeah. I make uh, So is this uh, like puppets. Sesame Street? It's like Sesame Street with a with a more mature sensibility. Oh. Uh, the premise is kinda like uh, similar to the Muppet show where a bunch of puppets get together to make a show. Only this show, instead of it being the old school vaudeville kind of thing, it's an internet show. So each character has a segment and it's all me. I do all the voices, I make all the puppets. I and do you all the operate editing. the puppets as well. I do, I do. Wow. Uh, I've actually started getting some nice uh, toned arm muscles because From... you have to do this. Oh. You have to kind of crouch and, and do this because right. you're, you know there's a green screen and I'm hiding and you don't want your head to pop in because then I have to key it out and that just adds well, more what, time. What if you like added like one of those green face masks? Oh, you know, I right. really, really should. That would make it yeah. a lot easier. The yeah. morph suit. Right. I might have to cut out a mouth hole though so I can still uh, uh I talk. suppose that would not sound... Uh, unless you know, unless I do a puppet right. who's you know or redub. Yeah. Oh, that's right. a good idea. Yeah. Redub. So the uh, yeah. the show I have a my plan is to air new episodes every week, either Monday or Tuesday. Monday right now is uh, nice. is working out really well. Now, how long is each episode? Each one is you know around seven to ten minutes long, so Perfect. it's not too long. It, they need to be short on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, they do. Uh, if you the longer mm. they get, the more likely someone's going to click well, out about halfway. We're through. a two-hour show on YouTube, and nobody watches us. Uh. Well, except for you, you, and you, and you. They watch us, but no, uh, yeah, 10 minutes is perfect or it's less. Perfect, yeah. That's what the YouTube, that's what the scientists at YouTube have told us. But, you know, we cannot show a film and have a guest in 10 minutes. It's no, just impossible. at least not a very, very long mm -hmm. film. All right. So if somebody wants to learn more about your show and you and all this, yes. where did they go? You can find me on YouTube at Weiss Films. I believe the actual page is called like weissfilms.info or so something. So you don't have like a, a URL, like a www I don't type? have a, a proper website website yet, but I'm in the process of oh. making one. You can find me on Facebook at weissfilms.info. Info. All right, we'll put that one up. That Weissfilms.info yeah. Weissfilms. on Facebook. Info or Weissfilms.insta on Instagram. Oh, nice. Yeah, and if you type, right. if you Google, if you YouTube search Weiss Films, I will pop up as the second or first option, and I'm dressed up like a carnival man with a mustache and a oh, top nice. hat. Oh, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So if you showed up second, who would be first? There's a, uh, a filmmaker whose name is also Eric Weiss. I don't, I think he oh. just makes little videos. Um, I think he's an imposter. Yeah, we're going to yeah. have to do something about yeah. that. I, I would I would speak to your attorney. I should speak to my No, attorney. don't speak to your attorney. I mean, there's got to be a million Eric Weisses in the world. You know, right? surprisingly, there aren't that many. But you know who one of the most famous Eric Weisses in history was? Harry Houdini. His birth name oh. was Eric Weiss. Originally, really? Yep. Originally spelled E-R-I-C-H-W-E-I-S-S-Z. Oh -S -S Good Lord. When he moved wow. to America from uh, Budapest, they made him change his name on Ellis Island to E-R-I-K. W E I S S, which is how I spell my name. Uh, so and then he changed like it to the Harry Houdini. The namesake of Houdini. Yeah, I used to think I was related to him because I do magic tricks and right. I, you know, got the last name. But uh, turns out it's just a very, very interesting coincidence. That's a wonderful coincidence. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming, Eric. We're going to have you, you back again, me. like sometime, I'd love and then to. Uh, maybe you'll come back as like, like a princess or something. Oh, any character. Yeah. I love doing right. characters. Right. All right. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. As far me. as you guys go, thank you for staying up late, watching the show with us. Livingston's most appreciative when you do this because it means uh, what? It means that my work was not for naught. His work was not in vain. So thank you for coming. We'll see you next week. Different guests, different movie. Don't know who, don't know what, but it will be fun. See you next time. So, Eric, uh, you know, I've been wanting to be an actor. And, really? You know, I, I'm, I'm not a very good actor, and I've not been given any opportunities. But, huh. you know, I could possibly be a puppeteer because I know how to do this. Do you think maybe I can assist with your project? I think that girl with the creepy dolls would be better.